I like football. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like talking about football the whole time. I also like water slides. <laughs> <laughs> Wet slides? They ain't. How dare you invent that? That's a genius idea. What is this? It's a slide, but it's wet. Fantastic. <laughs> what, uh, what's my favourite part of a water slide? Thank you for asking. It is, you're interrupting, but that's fine. <laughs> it's the bit that goes outside the leisure centre for a loop. <laughs> <laughs> that is elaborate. <laughs> Whoever thought of that, change the fucking game. <laughs> Imagine how many leisure centre meeting rooms he was laughed out of. You want to do what to the wall? <laughs> it's structural, it keeps the wind out. <laughs> you like this in your head, alright? Piece of shit. <laughs> how the fuck did you get a meeting with me, leisure centre guy? <laughs> Fucking closed door policy, mate. <laughs> but look at him now, he's probably got one in his house. <laughs> and outside his house. <laughs> I grew up near a water slide that went outside the building for a loop, which was an honour. <laughs> but the loop was opaque, so you didn't know when you were outside. <laughs> Why have you made that? <laughs> what you did was, you looked at it before you got on it, and you thought, I'm going to go outside at some point if I use that slide. And then afterwards, you would look back at it, and you'd go, I was outside at some point. <laughs> as you had. <laughs> Couldn't even check on your fucking car. That's the best bit. <laughs> oh, still that. <laughs> that would be the worst time to find out your car's been stolen. <laughs> you just get to the end of the water side, like that little skid bit with your, your family's waiting to clap you and you just stand up a bit. It's gone! It's gone! <laughs> is his face. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think whoever invented... <laughs> you right to win. I think whoever invented toothpaste just had one tooth. And everyone said, shouldn't you call it teeth paste? And he said, no. <laughs> I made this paste for my tooth, alright? <laughs> you got loads of teeth, don't be jealous. <laughs> I think whoever invented the umbrella was going to call it the brother, but they hesitated. <laughs> they said, that's a good invention, what are you going to call that? Um, brother? <laughs> well, oh, fuck, hell, he's written it down now. <laughs> that's how this works. <laughs> he's got to call up his wife, Mrs. Brella, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> okay. I... <laughs> I think whoever invented the wardrobe and whoever invented the hospital gown were rivals. This one's longer. <laughs> <laughs> now to present their inventions on the same day. Right, and they went, all right, first of all, just pick at you randomly. What, you, what, what have you brought? And he said, all right, I've brought a wooden storage container for clothes. I'm going to call it a wardrobe. And they said, that's fantastic. Good, all right. You, mate, you seem to have brought a robe to be worn on the wall. In <laughs> what are you planning on calling that? Fuck off. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Okay. Firstly, why is this how it works? Seems like a terrible system. Secondly, what do you always get to go first? <laughs> this is the fucking cupboard thing all over again, all right? I brought a board for cups. You start talking about cupboards. I've got to call it a tray. Am I still talking about cup? <laughs> <laughs> My thing is, well, the best way to describe myself these days, I've had this accolade for two years, and ever since uh, I got it, I've been telling all audiences this, because it's a nice way to introduce myself. Um, I was recently voted, you'll know this already, if you're a heavy social media user, uh, I was recently voted in the one of the 50 sexiest Jews on Twitter. <laughs> 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 It's true, isn't it? Um, it's true. I, uh, no, you're allowed to say, oh God, it's not <laughs> quite accurate. Um, <laughs> it's not what we say. Um, it's a really weird one. 50 sexiest Jews on Twitter. It's not something that I signed up for. It's not an official competition. They're not really, a, they're not allowed to rank the Jews these days. Um, <laughs> for a lot of quite well founded reasons, actually. Um, Someone sent me a link, a mate of mine sent me a link, there it was, number 37. 
um, mixed feelings about it, really. I think, obviously, I'm, I'm recently divorced, so nice to be called sexy. I know. So, of course, if something comes along where you're in a sexy list, with any amount of caveats, um, <laughs> of course you're happy. But at the same time, sexiest Jews is quite a small uh, subset, and then just the ones on Twitter <laughs> is another fairly limited. Also, I'm not Jewish, actually. <laughs> Jewish blood whatsoever. I've no idea how they researched this thing, but it wasn't done very thoroughly. I uh, looking forward to my sexist Muslim nomination. Swings around about. So I, I'm married to a woman. I, I have a Dutch wife. I'm um, Dutch wife, not euphemism. Um, <laughs> always very aware when I say it. It sounds like a very posh piece of barbecuing equipment. <laughs> Something that John Lewis would deliver, probably for free. You spend a bit of money on it, you know. But, um, Green van coming down your cold this and you're like, oh, here it comes, the Dutch wife! <laughs> Stick it in the bottom of the garden, Bob's gonna do his pulled pork on that. Um, <laughs> I, I've got a Dutch wife, well, obviously she'll have to go back post Brexit. Um, that's, uh, she doesn't read the papers, I haven't told them, that's what I said. In fact, they see their little wooden shoes and off your fuck, love. Um, <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Lots of things happening. Lots of, uh, my brain has started to enjoy the. Uh, I don't know whether this is a symptom of age. It's started to enjoy the. Let's wake up so early at 4 a.m. every morning and worry about absolutely every call at once game. That's a fun one, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody else experiencing this one? It's amazing, isn't it? How's it fucking know? How is it not? I've not been on time for, a, for, for, a, for an appointment in my waking life. How does my sleeping brain know that 3.58 will be a good time to take it all in? <laughs> my eyes are but no, my brain goes, don't look at the clock, so don't, don't look at the clock. If you look at the clock, it's over. Don't look at the clock, don't look at the clock. Fuck. How could it be fucking possible? Don't have a thought, so. Don't have a thought, it's all over. It's all over. Don't have a thought. And it's never anything handy, is it? Never anything useful. It's always ridiculous shit. You know, can you get bikinis with pockets? <laughs> smell like what? This is how bad I am. We've got sport relief at the end of this week, okay? And sport relief, comment relief. I don't know if they're still going to do the thing of celebs going to Africa to do the sad stuff, okay? I think it's probably, they probably should stop doing it, but in another part of me, I really want them to continue, because that is still my ambition as a comedian. <laughs> to get big enough that I get to do the sad stuff from Africa. <laughs> I know how shit that sounds. I know. And I know if I had made it that level, I'd have real trouble containing my glee. I know. <laughs> I'd be something like, well, standing here amongst the street children of Uganda, I think it's hard for people in Britain to realise what a massive break this is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not away, kids. You're blocking the shot. Um, <laughs> you know, genuinely not nice. If people think I'm nice, first of all, because I'm tubby. Who is tubby here? Yeah, love fat people in the gig. Thank you for coming. If it's not sold well, you make the room look fuller. And also, people think you're nice if you're tubby, they also think you're nice if you're middle class. Because middle class people are trained, as I am, trained to distract attention away from their privilege by being all sweet and putting themselves down. You watch middle class people in action, you go, that's a big house you live in. Oh, it's very messy. It's very messy inside. That's a nice car you've got. I've got a real deal on it. Well, it was free from my daddy. <laughs> Olivia Coleman winning an Oscar. Oh my gosh, how's this happened? How's this happened to sweet little me? Oh gosh, how's this happened to sweet little humble me? Oh my god, Lady Gaga, oh Meryl Streep, how's it happened to me? You went to private school, Olivia. Made it about ten times more. <laughs> I'm not having a go at Olivia Coleman. I love Olivia Coleman. They're, they're all Benedict Cumberbatch, Eddie Redmayne, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Tom Hiddleston, private school, private school. I, I went to private school. Look what the fuck I am. <laughs> Any private school people? Yay! Yay! Yay all on the back. I'm not sure. They're totally embarrassed. It's a nightmare. It's in fact, I just say to my dad, private school is wrong, it is terrible, I should leave. Then I'd sit down, watch Grange Hill, and think, oh, maybe just one more year. Because <laughs> with us private school kids, we used to watch Grange Hill like other kids watch Doctor Who. We're like behind the couch going, oh, it's Gripper! Like that. <laughs> You knew if you were a little posh kid you wouldn't survive Grey Chill. You knew it, like, alright, Gripper, Tucker, Pogo, who are you? I'm Hal, lovely to meet you. <laughs> Dinner money now! Dinner, to you that's lunch, to me that's supper. What are we gonna do? 